think in some of the confusion that y'all didn't vote on the minutes, um, Madam yeah, Clerk. No, was there, was there? I didn't think that there was the actual motion. Did you that, capture? Yeah. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah. We did. We there was a motion and a second, but I didn't, I didn't think the roll call was taken, and I, I didn't okay. hear it. Can we just clarify that for the record? Sure. Okay. The motion and the second was from who? Did you have that down? No, I didn't. Okay, well, I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. 13A, a city attorney, would you read the ordinance number, please? Yes, Madam Mayor. Ordinance number 2016-14 of the City of Lake Worth, Florida, amending Chapter 2 Administration, Article 6, Code Compliance, Section 2-69.3, Application for Lien Reduction, Considerations for Sale, Lien Releases, Fees, Fee Cap, to address the caps in the reduction of lien process, amending Section 2-69.3.1, Lien Reductions and Releases of Lien, to address lien searches to include a reservation of rights on behalf of the city and the collection of liens, to clarify what costs may be considered in the calculation of a lien reduction, to ensure properties subject to a partial release of lien are free of debt to the city and for other purposes, providing for conflicts, codification, severability, and effective date. So moved. Second. Second. Comment Williams? cards. Comment. comment cards. No comment cards. No. Okay. William? For the record, William Waters, Community Sustainability Director. Uh, it, this is a housekeeping item. Uh, you may recall that we passed a partial release of lien uh, change to our ordinance maybe two months ago. Um, out of that, there have been raised some questions uh, with regard to how we do with <coughs> lien reductions, partial releases of lien, releases of lien. Uh, the city attorney's office gave us some advice on where we might tighten up our ship when it comes to lien releases, as you recall, when we passed the ordinance, I think, three years ago, where we capped uh, how much a lien can be on an individual <coughs> lien basis, and then what cost could be attributed to reducing that lien prior to being reduced to 10% by the special magistrate. Uh, there were some costs people had tried to utilize that we would prefer to pay not. And so it's been uh, in the ordinance that you've got tonight, it's been clarified what costs can be attributed to the reduction of a lien and which ones cannot. We've also put in place in the ordinance a cap on the entire value of all the liens on a property. Uh, the ordinance that we originally passed starts the lien cap on the value of the property at the date on which it was actually recorded. So let's say a lien starts in 2014, whatever the value is then, that's how we calculate the 200% of the maximum for the lien. We have properties that have literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of liens on them, and the amount of that lien, even reduced by 10%, across the board is precluding those properties from being put on back on the tax roll and being put to productive use. So what we proposed is a 300% cap on the value of the liens based on today's market value. And in most cases, I would say at least 85%, that results in a ability for the new property owner or the current property owner to make the financial sense to invest in the property, fix it up, and then put it back on the tax roll versus it just sitting there running it fine. Uh, a couple of other things that were included are just some minor housekeeping items like I mentioned to clear up the process and make it clear uh, for people who apply for partial releases of lien and releases of lien themselves. There's a little bit more power given to the city manager in terms of when a contract is coming up and there's not time to get to the special magistrate. Uh, when he makes a decision or recommendation, it is carried to the magistrate after it's executed. Mr. Emerson? I, I just want to thank you. As you know, I sit in on most of the special magistrate meetings and and we do need to clean up some of the process. I just um, want to thank you, and, and we, we still have um, a lot of staff pressure, so to speak, so that this helps William you know, move things forward, but it still addresses the bad players, because there's still a handful of bad players out there. And as we, we work through the process, those bad players don't want to play with us anymore, because they know they can't get away with it. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner McCoy? Thank you, William, for working on this. You mentioned that actually the credit should go to the city um, attorney's office. Um, they Thank provided you. Oh well, no thanks to you. We provided <laughs> <the> job. <laughs> they made it all legal, so it, it's a 50-50 split on. Um, well, <laughs> Thank you to both parties. And um, you mentioned that, that the cap now would be 300 percent. That's for all the liens on the property. Right now, we have a cap per lien, but that lien cannot exceed 
200% of the market value of the property based on the market value on the date on which the lien was placed. What we're proposing in tandem with that is that the combined total of all the liens can exceed 300% of today's market value. Instead of each individual. Lien. Right. No, I, I follow that part. I appreciate that. And, you know, this may reflect my ignorance, but if a property is worth 100000 and there are liens that total 300000 who's going to want to buy that? Well, we have, and, and the liens are still running. Uh, the person who purchased the property can take into account all the costs incurred to bring the property compliance, and that comes off the 300000 right. And then it can be requested for lien reduction when it goes to the special magistrate, and under our code, she can reduce it, or he, as the case may be, to 10% of what's outstanding. So the maximum the person's going to owe is $30,000 in the scenario that you provided. If they, and if what, they do all the appropriate things. Well, that's, that's doing nothing. Um, if they did work, and say they incurred $50,000 worth of expenses, uh, to, they could reduce the lien by from three hundred to two fifty, dollars and then pay 10% of the difference, which is $25,000. What we're finding is people are spending quite a bit more on their properties to bring them into compliance of eligible expenses bringing their liens down. We have a number of liens, probably several dozen, where it's wiped out the entire lien. But the property is brought up to a far greater condition than it would be when we gave them no credit at all. And that that's excellent. I mean, it's not easy to design a process to, as Commissioner Amoroso, I believe it was, that said to Somebody said that, you know, there's some bad players, there's some folks that try to game the system, as Commissioner Maxwell says. Um, your sense is that on the whole, once we pass this, we're in pretty good shape that buildings are moving from just sitting and being not taken care of to we somebody some working. Numbers, what helps in this situation is there's a, a presumption that properties gain in value over time. We have a number of properties that, because of their co-compliance properties, have actually devalued. Sure. So 300 percent, uh, like we have a property in question that when its liens were placed, it was worth 150 in one case, it was worth 121 in another case, it's now worth 42 on tax roll. So 300 percent of that is 120, you reduce it back, costs are incurred, the most you're going to pay is 12,000, and that actually can make that property work. The program that you adopted couple years ago, I feel has actually been an incentive. Uh, the numbers of properties brought up in compliance with the amounts of money being spent, in addition to the amounts of money the city's collecting, and it may not be good for me to say this, is record breaking. Um, Co-compliance is collecting and, and complying more liens than I have ever seen in the three years prior to our putting that program in place two years ago. So fiscal year 15 and fiscal year 16, we are closing and bringing compliance a record number of properties, and the city is still collecting quite a bit of money toward the outstanding liens. Well, on the whole, it's working. Yes. Okay. We still have a long way to go. Yes, I understand that, but but the trend is positive. Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, we've got a motion on the floor and a second. Um, is this one for this that's one? The next one. The next one, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you.